Hi, welcome again to this virtual space. Um, thank you for those of you who have um, taken the time to look at uh, the presentations um, for theories of personality. I hope for those of you who have um, visited the site, the information has been useful for you. I know that in my last um, video, which was on Sigmund Freud, I had talked about the next person we would talk about was Eric Erickson, but um, I thought that it would be useful to actually do an overview of the psychoanalytic um, theorists that we were discussing. And so that is what I am going to do today. Um, so I want to, again, so this is just going to be an overview, um, just reviewing all of the information um, that I covered um, over the psycho, um, psychoanalytic theorists. So I wanted to start with just an overview or a review of what psychoanalysis is, um, because so often in the field, psychoanalysis is attached to the theorists. Um, okay, and this is a sidebar um, that happens so often in science in general, right? Psychology is a form of science, it's behavior of science, but in all forms of science, biology, physics, um, chemistry, so often the theorist becomes the face for the science. When science is science is science, and a scientist is a scientist who has a theory on the science. Um, and so often they're enmeshed when they should, it should be clear that they're, they are separate um, because what happens when they become enmeshed and the scientist theory becomes this law on the science when it's just a theory. Um, and this happened, you know, if we were to talk um, more specifically about um, racism, you know, that happened um, predominantly during um, pre-slavery and slavery and, and in, into the present, you know, where scientists, but more, more so this was done a lot in um, early history in Europe and in the Americas where scientists, predominantly white male um, European scientists were claiming theories on people of color being from an inferior race. Um, and then it became law because it was science, but that's not science. That was a scientist stating a theory. So I wanted to, to um, clarify that as well as clarify when we talk about psychoanalysis, right? Because psychoanalysis is a way of studying human behavior or just studying behavior because um, psychologists don't just, um, psychologists not only study human behavior, but they study animal behavior. Sometimes they study life, the environmental behavior. Um, so psychoanalysis is a form of, a way of studying the life around us, but there are theories on how you can interpret that information. So psychoanalysis is analyzing a person's past to present. That's what psychoanalysis is. You are looking at a person's past to present, and then you're connecting that analysis to a theory of personality and development. Um, and as you know, in, um, in our lectures on the psychoanalytic approaches, or excuse me, theorists, they all had a um, theory on development which is why I kind of contemplated if I should have done Eric Erickson before I did this overview. But I feel like, well, for me, I think he stands alone um, <clears throat> and was more purist on development on the personality versus the psychosis um, that um, the psychoanalytic theorists uh, went into or had theories on. Okay, so Freud overview. Freud um, believed there were three levels of consciousness. He believed there was the id, the superego, and the ego, and um, that the ego balance basically was the executive functioning, was the, the CEO, 
right, of managing the super ego in it to make sure neither one of them um, became imbalanced. And he felt like that the super ego was pre-conscious. Um, he felt this way because he felt like the morals and values and principles on, on standards of how to live, right, come from society, came from the community, came from the family of origin. And so they were like, they could, although it may not be on the forefront of how they were living their life, the individual lives their life, it's there um, on the pre-conscious level, uh, meaning that it can, it can um, what's the word I'm looking for? You, it can be resurfaced if need be. Versus the id, he felt like was unconscious. Like it was these urges. Um, remember, a lot of Freudians thought is on sexual impulses and sexual agitation and urges um, and gratification. He felt like all of this was like buried way beneath, um, which I had mentioned in my video on Freud that I felt like maybe that could be because of the dysfunction in his home. Remember, he came from a very strict um, conservative religious home and maybe he wasn't able to explore all parts of himself. And so he became sexually agitated and frustrated and felt like he was deprived to be able to explore his gratifications. And so it's suppression. Um, he, when Freud talks about unconscious level, he's talking about suppression. Um, so those were the three levels of consciousness of Freud. So when we talk about Carl Jung, um, and you'll notice some similar similarities, um, but also hopefully you'll notice the differences as well. And so with Carl Jung, he felt like there were three parts to a personality as well, but he's, um, he also believed that in these three parts that we had the archetype, right? So the ego he felt like was the, the rational part of us, like the conscious level, the, the, the level that basically makes the decision similar to Freud's. Um, he felt like there was a personal unconscious. Um, again, this is similar to Freud's superego. Um, but for Jung with the personal unconscious, um, it, it was not so much about where the morals and values were. It was just where um, your family of origin, um, your personal preferences um, on, I think if you recall in Carl Jung's theory, I had talked about how um, the Myers-Briggs and the Kaiser, um, Kiersey, I'm sorry, Kiersey personality test, like they are modeled off of Carl Jung's um, theory. And so like these preferences of how we live our life, um, rather if I, if you gravitate more towards introversion or extroversion, like these are what he would consider the personal unconscious level. And then the collective unconscious would be, so actually, you know, now that I'm talking this out, it's almost as if Jung split the superego into two parts because the collective unconscious was more so like the universal unspokenness of rules. Like for example, um, What's an unspoken rule in society? Like if I'm in, if I'm at a grocery store, I'm not going to just cut the line, right? Like you're not, or I'm not going to just start screaming out loud singing, right? Like to a full volume singing while I'm waiting in line. Like these are like collective unconsciousness, like these unconscious rules that we, unspoken rules that society run on um, that are universal. And so that, that was the collective unconscious. But he also felt like we had archetypes, right? Like, and that these archetypes were um, inherited tendencies on how we perceive and respond in particular ways to the universe, um, universal human situations. So these archetypes kind of connect to the personal unconscious. Um, it's our unique way of how we go about looking at the world. But with archetypes, sometimes they can switch, kind of like we wear the mask, right? So it's like, I may have an archetype that I put on a preference when I'm at work versus when I'm hanging out with my girlfriends or something like that. Um, so that's an overview of Young's personality. 
theory on personality. And so when we talk about Adler, um, remember with Adler, he was more psychosocial based. He placed a lot of emphasis on how our environment um, impacts who we are. And so he spends a, he spends a lot of time on um, theories on how the family of origin plays a role in that, like um, the roles of the mother and father, right? Like the energy level in the home, the dynamics in the home, the birth order of the children. Um, he also feels like there's, so from that you create a self, right? Like, so for example, um, if you came from a home that was um, very loud and, and boisterous and argumentative, maybe you decide to create a self that is completely opposite from that. And so like that becomes a form of who you are. And then the style of life, um, he believed that we all have four major types that we live by. We're either trying to rule life, get what's ours, avoid life, or socially be useful, which he felt was the healthy balance um, of wanting to enter, uh, wanting to connect and interact with the world around them in a healthy way. And then he talks about fictional finalisms. And um, for him, again, like that combination of family life, creative self and style of life, if, if you are socially useful, then that is healthy and you have healthy social interests. However, if you had um, dysfunctionality in any of those parts, then you develop a way of overcompensating for that. And that's where his inferiority and superiority complex comes in. So with Hornet, remember Karen Hornet was um, the first female, well, I don't know if she's the first female, but the first female recorded um, feminist psychologists are who developed the first feminine psychology theory um, rather. And um, with Horne, she felt like the basics of someone's personality starts with hostility, right? Like, and if you recall her home life was very um, disruptive and, un and unpleasant for her being a female um, with a father that was overbearing and, um, the male ego and the and the um, male energy was praised more in the home, so she felt um, she felt insignificant and unvalidated, and so all of this, of course, played out in her theory on personality or theory on self. And so she felt like, you know, in childhood, there is a lot of hostility that be, that is built up because of unmet needs, right? And um, and from that anxiety develops. And then from that anxiety, there are ways that um, the individual tries to protect themselves from those anxieties, right? And so she felt like there were normal, healthy defenses, and then there were neurotic, unhealthy defenses on how a person um, maneuvers through that. Okay, so that was an overview of um, the psychoanalytic approaches that we discussed. And um, I thought it would be useful if we kind of like just did um, a, a, um, a slide that kind of just put the two together, the Freudian and Neo-Freudian, so you could see the differences. And remember Neo-Freudians are basically more so considered the modern day, um, psychoanalytic theories and because um, they're post Freud um, where they took some of the concepts of Freud but they developed them more. And I would say um, now in um, the 21st century, a lot of psychodynamic or psychoanalysis theory uh, type of approach and therapy are uh, working with people um, has now taken those neo Freudians and kind of have expanded them more, um, adding a little bit more of, um, I would say, the, the, the multicultural piece, right? Um, and the, 
the fact that um, life is more complex. And so um, the in, it more individualized on the person's experience, the individual's experience. And so that's, I would say that's more of the expounding of the neo Freudian and where we are today with psychoanalysis or psychodynamic um, approach to therapy. So with the neo Freudians, they accepted Freud's basic ideals on the personality structure and not so much the personality structure of the id, ego, and superego. Because if you remember from our overview, they had different perspectives, but they do accept Freud's basic ideals of a personality structure. They also saw the importance of the unconscious, um, the shaping of the personality from childhood, and the dynamics that anxiety play in these defense mechanisms that we um, can develop to try to protect ourselves from anxiety. So those would be some of the things that they accepted. Uh, but what they broke away from was um, placing, the, placing more emphasis on the conscious mind role in interpreting experiences and in coping with the environment. And so um, with the Neo-Freudians, our modern day, uh, there's more emphasis in exploring how nature and nurture are playing a part in someone's um, personality or development of self. Uh, they also broke away from the, the strong emphasis that Freud placed on sex and aggression, um, and that this was all the, the all-consuming motivation for how people were living their life. And instead, they, they emphasized more of loftier motives and which when I mean by loftier motives like that our motivations have to do with wanting to connect, um, wanting seeking love, seeking um, praise, um, seeking a, an ideal of self like they saw that there were there were um, more broader reasons for the aggression um, or agitation that sometimes develop within people. Okay, so that is an overview of um, the psychoanalytic approaches. I think in your reflection of the psychoanalytic approaches, as you are exploring your likes and dislikes with the theory, I think it's important to also consider the BIPOC considerations. Um, Black, Indigenous, and people of color, as I have stated um, throughout my uh, presentations, that a lot of these theory theorists and theories were based off of the person's own interacting with the world around them. And when you think about when these theories were developed, the world around them was very much white and European and um, segregated, um, a lot of racial thoughts, racist thoughts on people of color, um, a strong um, a gravitation to the Western way of thinking versus and um, belittling the Eastern philosophy and way of, of thinking of mind, body, and spirit of uh, our self. So I think that it's important to keep these type of things into consideration, which is where I feel like psychodynamic has, has come to in modern day, in today's time. Um, the BIPOC considerations are, are, there are more considerations of the BIPOC community and the BIPOC way of viewing self. And then also as you reflect, you know, what is useful, what is not, again, um, successful, uh, a successful therapist is someone who is able to pick up pieces from all the different theories and tailor them into their, um, to what is useful for them, right? But also allow flexibility because each individual that you come in contact with will come with their own set of beliefs of how they view the world um, and it's not about you trying to convince them to see themselves in the, in the theories that you may gravitate more to, right? Um, but 
the out the the main goal um, is for them to live a whole healthy life. Um, so that is the overview. I hope that it is useful for you um, and that you were able to get some information, um, good information or useful information. Uh, the next video that I will do will be on Eric Erickson. Um, and if there is anyone in particular that you would like to see a video on, please drop that in the comment, sec comment section and um, I will see what I can do with that. All right, have a good day.